Hello, welcome back. Here we are at, uh, what was it, day four now? <laughs> of this cranky guy. Um, yeah, we got a lot of motorcycles in my neighborhood. Um, what we're going to look at, I'm going to take a closer look at this uh, at this pump. Most importantly, the, um, the vein pump that's in the back of the housing and the pressure regulator that also lives back here. Uh, where we left it yesterday is we put the injection lines on, we put the injectors in, uh, we just couldn't get the, the cavity to fill. In fact, um, let's see, before, which one do I want to do first? I think the first thing I'm going to check is do kind of a, a gut check on <clears throat> this check valve. What happens here, uh, excuse me, relief valve, fuel comes in here and it enters the top of the pump housing. I'll make all this clear um, in a little while. And it is then pumped around the inside of this pump. And then there's a relief that is at the bottom of this housing. Well, it's actually kind of in the middle. And if that relief is open, meaning it's constantly in relief, there will never be any fuel pressure built up and um, it won't fill the fill the cavity. So the first thing I'm going to do, let me grab my fuel pan. Wow, that fuel is gross looking. I don't know how much is going to come out here. We want to check that um, that check valve first. I think that's the easiest thing to do. And what I'm looking for here, there's going to be a little fuel that comes out of here, a little bit, not a whole lot. Now, I'm going to go pump it, pump the uh, priming pump by hand, and there should not be a bunch of fuel dumping out of there. Let's see. Oh, this pump is almost frozen. Whoa. There is a bunch of fuel dumping out of there, isn't there? Okay, that's not supposed to happen. That is definitely not supposed to happen. Maybe a little bit, but that seemed to me to be a lot. Let me go try it one more time. That may be the core of our issue right there. Wow, this pump is frozen. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's way too much fuel to be coming out. All right, I think that's the issue. Well, at least that's definitely a issue. So what I'm going to do next, I'll put this plug back on. I do my best to keep stuff clean, although I don't always succeed. So that was a check of the um relief valve in here and as far as i'm concerned that is a fail the other thing we're going to check is the uh the umbrella seals a good way to check that i believe is by taking off this cover now i had this this cavity pretty well full of fuel the other day so if my umbrella seals are good it should remain full It should be pretty close to full. If it's empty, that means the umbrella seals are bad. And I'm dumping this fuel into the crankcase. And that is also a problem. By the way, this, uh, this screw, uh, I broke taking the thing apart. I obviously fixed it. Um, there was a little bit of stud left over on that screw. And I just simply welded a nut to that and uh, pulled the stud right out. That's why the housing is a little black right here because I heated the whole thing with a torch first to kind of warm up the whole body before I took that, um, that nut out. Okay, that's still full. What the hell is in there though? What is that? Hold on.
there's something, some sort of debris floating in there. That stuff. Let me uh, go grab a pair of tweezers and see what that stuff is. Bear with me. Well, not tweezers, but needle nose. It was, oh, that, <laughs> that's just a part of the governor. Oh, geez. Okay, my bad. All right, so now um, I'm going to just set that cover back on there. I don't want, <laughs> I thought the, the part of the governor, the governor linkage was just like random debris floating <laughs> in, the, in the cover. Oh, wow. So I'm just going to set this back on here. So the fact that it's full tells me that the umbrella seals are probably okay. So I'm going to take off this injection line and this injection line. Let me show you what I'm doing. And I'll give you a closer look of all this stuff. So the vein pump and relief valve is in this end housing. And I think I can get this end housing off if I just take off this line and this line. I think I can leave this line and this line on. And of course, take the fuel inlet off. Take off these lines and take off that fuel inlet. And I think I can get that housing off of there, that end housing. <clears throat> Whoop. I need another wrench. Always need another wrench. Isn't that always true? I am highly suspect of that relief valve. Boy, if that was the if that was the problem, I'm gonna be a real happy guy. Because at least that means we can get some fuel out of this thing today. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, those were that's right, those were not loose. I just left them hand tight. I'm putting my hand under here because there's a little washer. There it is, under here, that I want to save because I didn't use it. It's still good. Same deal here. Oh, that one's a little too snug. Oh, butterfingers. So I think we'll take off the... Uh, just remove these injector lines completely. Just so they're not in the way. There it is. All right, I got all my washers. This crumbling paint everywhere sure is making a mess. So this guy is number two. So we're gonna pull him out completely. If I recall, these come out better through the top. All right. And this guy is number four. Pull him out completely. Maybe. <laughs> Doesn't seem to want to go either direction. How do I, I don't want to bend that rod. Well, that, that can just sit there. That's fine. All right, and, oh, I'm going to pull out the injectors again as well, just to give the engine, again, another easier time in cranking. Oh, by the way, there was a point in the video from the other day where the engine seemed to really labor uh, during the cranking. And I wonder if that's because, even though it's an open-center hydraulic system, that that's the engine sort of struggling with moving the hydraulics through the system. I don't know. Okay, let me bring these injectors in, in the garage here. Okay. 
Oh, that's why. <laughs> okay, so remember that moment when the engine was laboring the other day? Here's why. The lift. The lift is all the way up. The engine was trying to crank the engine and the hydraulics. The draft is down. That was kind of dumb. This should give, give the engine, the starter motor, a little bit easier time. <laughs> I wondered about that. All right. So now I'm going to just take that off. Let me grab a container for the screws. I like to keep all my hardware in one spot. Get all of my little bits and pieces in one place. And this cover just comes off with four screws. And there's going to be some fuel dumping out of there. Wow, I had those torqued on there pretty good. That is an eight millimeter socket, if I recall. That's right, I did have these torqued. There's a torque value for these. So eight millimeters, what is that, 11, 30 seconds, I think. So we'll just break these loose. There's a screwdriver for the rest of the way. So the reason why I'm so suspect of this relief valve is because when I first took this pump apart, the relief valve was actually kind of falling apart in the bottom of the housing. And I was kind of guessing at how it went together. All I had to go by was a kind of a hard to read diagram off of John Deere's website, which is probably from some very old information. So let's see if we can make sense of it. There, it's out. All right. Let me get that out of there. So, the fuel, can you see this? The fuel comes in these top holes, comes into the, from here, from the fuel inlet, goes through a fuel screen, comes into these top holes, and then goes through the pump and this is a vein type pump it is a positive displacement pump so it needs a relief valve so the fuel comes in in this area right here and the vein pump imagine the top of this thing rotating kind of this way so as the, vent, as, the, as the vein pump rotates, this cavity becomes that. This cavity becomes bigger. That creates a vacuum. So that brings the fuel in. And as, a, as the pump moves even further, this cavity starts to compress and starts to compress the fuel. Well, at that point, the fuel, I mean, it has to go one way or the other. So either, sorry, I'm having bad camera movements. Either um, the fuel that starts to be compressed here goes into the pump and you know does its thing in the pump, or it comes out these holes and goes out through the relief valve. Now that relief valve should be closed. That's why when we were checking it earlier with the hand pump, that was important because that was showing us that the relief valve is maybe not working so good. There's a little plate here that I'm trying to get out. I can't get that out. I need a little pick to get in there. 
and we're going to take a close. All right, so here's the little plate. I'm going to stick a little pick in this hole. And we're just going to pull it out. Fuel comes in right here. There's a little screen in there. It's pressurized, and it comes through there, and that's where it's getting relieved. And I think that's where our problem is. Okay, so here's the relief. I took that plate off. It's outside. Here's where the fuel comes in, and this is just a plug. We're going to start with taking this out. Nothing's falling out of there. We're going to take this out. So this is the relief. So this screen is where fuel comes out. And this hole, I think, is where... Well, wait a minute. That's not right. Oh, oh, this was in there backwards. Was it? No, it wasn't. It's was okay. I thought there was a spring in there. Maybe there is. I'm not feeling a spring. Did we leave the spring out? There's no spring. Okay. There should be a spring in there. Let me get my shop air. That would certainly be the problem. Where's my flashlight? There's no spring. Where's the spring that was in there? There's supposed to be a spring. Well, that would certainly be the problem. Uh, if, uh, <laughs> if I believe, if what's happening is what I believe is happening. So, what I believe is happening is fuel. Let's see, I need like a pointer type thing. Fuel is being pressurized on here. This is the outlet side of the pump. And it was pushing up against this piston. And since there's no spring in here, uh, the piston was just going up and going into full relief all the time. That's the problem. Well, that's certainly a problem. There was a spring in there, I swear. It must have, it must have departed the pattern. Probably sprung away as I was messing with it. Darn it. Well... Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that is definitely not helping, not helping matters at all. Now, I wonder if there's a way that we can prove this. How can we prove this? The fact that the spring being gone means there's no pressure in here. I wonder, is there a way I can prove that? Um... I'm thinking. So the bummer thing is that means I gotta order a John Deere part. And and I certainly don't have one on hand, that's what I'm trying to say. So there's an adjustment plug in there also. That's what I was trying to get at here. There's an adjustment plug right there. So you can adjust the tension on that spring and you can adjust the pressure, the relief pressure. This is really frustrating because I know I had a spring in there. I know there was a spring in there when I took it apart, but there's not a spring in there now. And there's nothing I can do about it either. Yeah, I don't see it sitting here on the floor. That thing could have taken off to points unknown. Oh, well, darn it. I'm pretty sure I don't have one that this that will just kind of fit this thing either. Boy, I sure would like to figure out a way to just test that, just to make sure the rest of the pump is okay. What if I put just a small piece of fuel line in here, just to kind of simulate the spring, 
just to see if we can get the cavity to fill when you crank the engine. You know what I mean? Let me show you. I'm looking for a small piece of a little piece of vacuum line. Oh, that's gonna be perfect. All right, so here's what I'm doing. Now this is just for testing purposes, just for today. I want to be very clear about that. So we're going to use a piece of piece of fuel line, a little vacuum line, to stick in there and hold this piston down. Okay. And we just want to put it back together. I'm kind of being very arbitrary about the sizing of that thing. <laughs> Almost dropped it. Oh, it's getting dirty. We just want to hold the end of the piston from going into a relief. And that's way too long. <laughs> Let's cut it a lot shorter. Now, I'm not advocating you doing this, you know, to your machine. I'm not saying this is a good thing to do. I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm just saying this is what we're going to do to test the theory. That's all we're doing right now is testing this theory. Okay. We're just going to plug up the hole and see if we can't make this work. And again, this is just for testing. This is temporary. It is just for today. All I want to do is see that cavity fill up with fuel. That's it. All right, come with me. All right, here we are back at the pump. I'm going to put this, you know, I suppose there's a spring in here. My little hardware bin. No, I don't see one. Yeah, that, that thing just took off somewhere. All right, so we're going to put this cover back on. figure out which way it's got a little locating pin okay hmm. where are the screws they came out of the there they are there's one Look at the screws that came out of that back housing they have lots of locking tab mechanisms on them all right, so I'm going to put this back on. Whoops, I got my little locking tab on there backwards. There we go. going to be cool if this works. Now watch, that spring is probably, you know, no longer available. Can't get it. Got to go to the hardware store and make one or something like that. I'm sure I can find it. I have in the past dealt with the very fine folks at Oregon Injection. And they've helped me out with difficult to find parts. I'm not sure my little locking tab is in the right place there. Yes, it is. Is it? Doesn't look right. There. I guess that's a, what do you call it, anti tamper? Right, so maybe the wire is anti-tamper and the tab really is just a unlocking tab. I don't know. What do I know? So if this works, and, and the only thing I'm going to call works is starts filling up the cavity, um, I'm going to order a new spring.
would be nice if you could see fuel coming out, but that would be pretty cool. I think it's funny that there was no spring in there. <laughs> Jeez. Talk about kind of a dummy thing to miss, you know? I did take that apart. I did uh, replace those O-rings. So no doubt when I replaced those O-rings, that spring came out. And um, had other ideas. I may not have that in there all the way. No, I don't think I do. <coughs> now it's over. Okay. And the best part is when I get my new spray. I can just kind of, um, well, I may take this cover off again. I can get at it from the bottom. I mean, that's true. on these bolts so the, <laughs> the tools kind of get stuck on them a little bit sometimes. All right, so now I'm going to take the charger off and here's my little triggery thingy. Oh, I'll take the cover off and I am hoping to see fuel coming out of there. Let's take a close look. All right. Where is that thing? Hold on. I lost it. Here it is. All right, here goes. <laughs> Maybe. Ah, nuts. Hang on. Oh, we're recording. We're recording still? Yeah, we're recording. Okay. So, in all of my messing around with the starter yesterday, uh, I think I caused a little damage to the solenoid because now the starter is not kicking over unless I hold my little, uh, you know, button, uh, my little trigger, and bridge the terminals with a screwdriver, which I'm going to do right now. What we're going to look for is fuel come spilling out of that housing. All right, so we got to do this at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Here goes. All right, did, did the fuel level rise? I see bubbles coming out. I definitely see bubbles coming out. All right, we're gonna crank it a little bit longer. All right. <laughs> I'm 
my little tool I use to bridge those terminals is getting hot enough to melt snow. Definitely seeing some movement. Definitely seeing more bubbles coming out. That's really encouraging. One more time. Yeah, it's too bad that solenoid isn't working. I can take that off and fix it. Boy, again, I'm not seeing a whole lot. Hmm. I would have expected that fuel to come shooting out of there by now. It is encouraging to see the bubbles, though. That is true. Yeah, this thing is working on that uh, lift again. The solenoid isn't working. Yeah, that's that engine's working too hard at the moment. Starter motor's working too hard. That's got to be from the hydraulic system. It's certainly part of the problem. But once again, we have to stop here because now we have a problem with the uh, with the starter solenoid or something. Something is causing the engine to work real hard, causing the starter to work real hard to turn this engine over. And I have a feeling it has to do with the hydraulic system. And it may just be because it's just been sitting for too long and it's too cold and you just have to be patient and wait for a nice day. But, in the meantime, this is really encouraging uh, news. Uh, that we now have fuel supposedly going through that main pump. But again, I can't prove it because the engine is turning over too slowly to generate any real pressure. Yeah, well, there's definitely fuel coming out. I see it dripping. It's trying to it's trying to inject. That's cool. All right, well, I really think we should stop here until I get that solenoid fixed. Because that is really a hassle, not having, <laughs> not having the starter solenoid working. I'm going to put the cover of this pump back on again. What a hassle. Man, I wish it was warmer. <laughs> and I think in the meantime, I'm going to order a new starter solenoid. Assuming I can get a new starter solenoid. And uh, I'm going to get a spring for that... Uh, um, that relief valve because I really think that was definitely an issue and then we're just going to have to wait till it gets a little bit warmer I think anyway thanks for watching stay tuned hey welcome back uh, I am out of time for today but I wanted to share this with you very briefly I fixed the solenoid yeah, whoops, let me get the camera around here. We got the engine cranking over again. 
That's that vent hole. Check that out. <laughs> so that definitely means that the uh, vein pump is working for sure. And we do need to replace that spring in the, in the regulator side of things. Um, but that's a real good sign. What's not a real good sign is how that engine uh, labors after just a little while. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's just because it's cold. Anyway, uh, again, I'm out of time. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.
Hey, welcome back. Uh, I am out of time for today, but I wanted to share this with you very briefly. I fixed the solenoid. And, whoops, let me get the camera around here. We got the engine cranking over again. That's that vent hole. Check that out. So that definitely means that the uh, vein pump is working for sure. And we do need to replace that spring in the in the regulator side of things um, but that's a real good sign what's not a real good sign is how that engine uh, labors after just a little while I'm not sure what that is maybe it's just because it's cold anyway uh, again I'm out of time thanks for watching stay tuned